Welcome to this video on the topic of complex numbers. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can calculate the modulus and argument of a complex number using manual calculations and also using our technology. Now a complex number may be represented as a vector. A vector's magnitude, or in other words its length, is described by the modulus. Consider the example, we have z equals 3 plus 2i. We can represent this complex number over here as a vector. Observing this complex number, we notice that it is composed of a real component and an imaginary component. We can plot this on the argon diagram to represent the vector, the real component being measured on the horizontal axis and the imaginary component on the vertical. Plotting this, I'm roughly 3 units across and 2 units high. So 3 units real, 2 units imaginary. Now calculating the modulus for this particular complex number, the way in which I can do it is I can say the absolute value of complex number z denoted by this straight bracket. Next I'm going to use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the magnitude. So it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. Evaluating this, I'm going to find that it is 9 plus 4. And then finally, it's going to be the square root of 13. So this is my modulus here for z. Easy does it. So what we notice from this particular example is that the modulus is the length of the vector. Alright, let's have a look at two more examples and then we'll investigate how to do this using the calculator. We are presented with the complex number omega is equal to 2 minus 2i, representing this complex number on the argon diagram as a vector. I am going to go two units in the real axis, so horizontally, and then minus one unit on the imaginary, which will take me to have a vector that looks something like this. Now calculating the modulus for this, I write the absolute value of omega is equal to, and then I'm going to take the square root of the real component and the square root of the imaginary component. Calculating this, I discover that the modulus for this particular complex number omega is equal to root 5. Final example. We have lowercase sigma, so sigma here is equal to negative 1 plus 3i. Representing this firstly as a vector, I'm going to go to negative 1 on the real axis and then up 3, so positive 3 on the imaginary axis. Thus my vector looks like as shown. Calculating the modulus, I take the absolute value of sigma, go for Pythagoras' theorem, so it's negative 1 squared plus 3 squared and lo and behold this one has a modulus of root 10. All right now that we can do the manual calculations let's have a look at how we can use our calculators to calculate the modulus for these complex numbers here. So I'm going to say up we come to our calculators and we're going to go into run matrix mode by clicking 1. Next, we have to make sure our calculators are set into complex mode and also into radians. To do this, we go shift menu. We go down to our angle and we press F2 for radians. Then we go down for complex mode. We want to set it to rectangular mode or also known as Cartesian mode. So we go F2 again. Next, we press exit and we're good to go. Now, to do the calculations for the complex numbers, what we need to do is we simply press option complex and then we're going to go a b s so absolute next we simply put in our complex number in this case it's 3 plus 2 i we also have i down here as well we can use or this one's fine hit execute we can see that we get root 13. next one let's key it in absolute 2 minus i and we see that's equal to root 5 and final one we have sigma so absolute minus 1 plus 3 i and lo and behold we get a value of root 10 as expected 
So what we've been able to do here is to calculate the modulus of complex numbers using both the manual method and the calculator method. Let's put this away for now. All right, moving on. Now that we've had a look at the modulus, let's have a look at the argument. The argument describes the angle, or in other words, the direction of the vector formed by the complex number. By convention, the domain of the argument is defined as, and we say that the argument is theta, and it has a domain of roughly between negative pi up to pi. Now the argument is calculated in a similar manner to the way in which we calculate the geometry of the unit circle. Now as such, what we're doing is we're dealing with a situation where we can have four different types of scenarios. Now the first scenario that we can encounter is when we have a positive real component and a positive imaginary component. In such a case, we get a vector that looks something like this. So we're pointing outwards in a top right manner. So the first, first quadrant. Now when we're calculating the angle here, what we're dealing with is a triangle where we're using our inverse tangent trig function with the imaginary component B and the real component A such that we calculate an angle that sweeps in an anti-clockwise direction of the real axis. This angle itself we can call it theta or we can call it phi. In this case what we can say is that the angle that we calculate is equal to our argument theta. So this is our first case situation here, the simplest of all to calculate. Now when we move past the first quadrant, we move into a situation that requires multiple steps to calculate our argument. Now what we're dealing with here is a situation where we have a negative real component. So we're not here, but we're over here and a positive imaginary component. So we're going to get a vector that looks something like this. Consequently, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with an imaginary component that goes upwards like that and a real component that goes across like this. And as such, what we end up doing is if we calculate the angle for this particular vector, we end up getting the interior angle here called phi. But what we're actually interested in is the angle over here, theta. So to calculate theta, what we have to do is we have to use the clever calculation of theta is equal to the pi, take away our interior angle phi over here. So this is how we get the argument for the vector that's in the second quadrant. All right, moving along, we have the third quadrant. This is when we have a negative real component and a negative imaginary component as well. Now, consequently, the vector for this particular sort of situation is going to look something like this. So we're pointing downward like so. Now you might think to use your unit circle sort of identities and say that theta is like this, but remember the domain for the argument is defined as being between negative pi and pi. And if we do this, we're not in our domain anymore. Rather, what we need to do is we need to do a angle shown like this. So theta is like that. We're sweeping clockwise. Now similarly, if we want to calculate this, we first have to get the interior angle shown over here because this is our imaginary component and we're using our real component to do this. And consequently, the calculation to do this is theta is equal to negative pi plus phi. So this is how we get our argument when we're dealing with the third quadrant here. And then finally, fourth quadrant, this is the second simplest. We have a vector that goes positive real component, negative imaginary component. Vector looks something like that. The numbers we're working with, so imaginary is like this. Our real component looks like this. 
So therefore, both our theta and our T look like this. So what that implies is that theta is equal to negative V. Now using this information here, let's put it to use and calculate the argument of the following complex numbers. First thing we have is Z. Calculating the argument for this, first thing we need to do is we need to calculate phi. So we'll go phi is equal to the inverse tan of this uh, these numbers up here. Now looking at the diagram we have, this would be the opposite, so B, and this is the adjacent. And tangent works by opposite over adjacent, so it's always going to be the imaginary part over the real part. Next part, we need to use our technology. So we need to make sure we're in radians and we go shift, tangent, then we're going to go two over three. Close it off. This reveals to us 0 0.588 and we're working to three decimal places. Now, looking at the situation we have here, we know we're working in the first quadrant whereby our theta is equal to our phi. So we can skip a step and say that this is theta. So therefore the argument for Z is equal to 0 0.588, just like that. Okay, let's look at a more challenging example. We have omega is equal to negative four plus three i. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate phi. So phi in this case is always going to be inverse tangent and it's going to be the real component, sorry, imaginary component over real component. Now, because of the way we're calculating these using our quadrants over here, whenever we have a negative real component or negative imaginary component, we can drop the negative altogether and just throw it through as a natural number or a, sorry, we can just throw it through as a positive number. So three over four, don't have to put the negative in. Calculating this, it's going to be inverse tangent and this gives us a value of 0.644. Looking at the fact we are in the second quadrant because it's negative real component, positive imaginary, so we're up here. What this implies is that we have to use this identity here. Theta is equal to pi take phi. Calculating this, I get 2.498 radians. So therefore my argument for omega is equal to 2.498. Okay next one we have sigma is equal to negative 3 minus i and we want to calculate the argument for this. Jumping ahead we can say phi is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 over 3 which gives us 0 0.321 or 0 0.322. Looking at the situation we're dealing with here, we're negative real negative imaginary, so we're third quadrant, so therefore our identity is theta is equal to negative pi plus phi. This will give us the result, negative 2.81, negative 2.820. Therefore the argument or sigma is negative 2.820. Okay, final one, we have x is equal to two minus four i. Again, starting off by going for the interior angle, phi, we have four over two, which gives us 1.107. Calculating theta. Theta in this instance is positive real component negative imaginary so it's going to be negative phi so it becomes a nice easy one so therefore the argument for x is equal to 1.107 this is the manual calculation let's have a look at how we do it on our calculators bringing up our calculators the way in which we do this is we go into option complex 
and then we're presented with argument. We got arg, then we simply throw in the values. So verifying the first one, we indeed get 0 0.588 for the second one. We indeed get 2.498. Third one. Negative 2.820. And then final one. We indeed get negative negative 1.107 so I saved myself from making a mistake using this calculator to verify so in summary what we had a look at in this lesson was we had a look at how we could calculate the modulus and we had a look at how we can calculate the argument and we had a look at how the modulus and argument represent the length and the angle of a complex number